Today we have a WRC hearing in Ballsbridge. Some of these WRC hearings, Workplace Relations Commission's hearings, are virtual and some are in person. This one is in person, it's in Ballsbridge. So it's 7 o'clock in the morning here in Enfield. I'll be leaving, I suppose, at 8 or 9. The hearing is not till half 11, but I want to be there in good time. It's to do with a redundancy claim on behalf of a client of mine, so I'm acting for the employee. The employee was uh, subject to, along with other uh, colleagues and employees, a transfer of undertaking situation. And in the transfer of undertaking or the changeover from his existing employer to his new employer, his job was essentially abolished. At least that's our case, that's our claim. We're claiming that because his job was abolished and because the offers of alternative employment either A, were uh, unreasonable or uh, unacceptable uh, on a couple of grounds. One, that one of the offers or the offer would have been essentially a demotion and the other ground on which we believe it was entirely reasonable for him to reject the offer of alternative employment was that extra travel would have been involved. So we're saying that there was alternative employment offered. We're acknowledging that, but we're saying on two grounds that he was perfectly entitled to refuse the offer of alternative employment. One, because there was essentially a demotion, and two, because there would have been more travel involved in the new position than the old one. He didn't take the position that was offered and therefore we're saying his old position was essentially abolished. We're saying that's a redundancy. We're saying he's entitled to a redundancy payment. And he was in the job for 10 or 15 years. I can't remember exactly how many. But if the claim is successful, there's a right few bob in it for him. So it's a case that's worth pursuing. I suppose it's a little bit better. I would have thought a little bit better than 50-50. I wouldn't put it much stronger than that. Probably 60-40. So, anyway, the submission has gone in. We sent in the submission by PDF to the WRC there a few weeks ago. And the submission then is sent by the WRC to the other side. So, the adjudicator will have the submission on the file and hopefully he or she will have read it, our submission. We've heard, heard nothing from the other side and we've had no submissions from the other side. This is the unfair and it's actually against the rules because you're supposed to have your submission in 15 days in advance of the hearing. Today is the day of the hearing and we've had absolutely nothing from the other side. There is a possibility that the other side will land uh, a big submission at the last minute on us and obviously that's unfair because we won't have time to review it fully and we would be nearly obliged or we'd have to consider looking for an adjournment to uh, give us time to look at their submission and see what they're saying. Having said that, we've waited quite a while for this hearing. I'm anxious and the client would be anxious just to proceed and get it on. The uh, net issues, the issues to be disputed or which are in dispute are fairly straightforward. So regardless of the submission that the other side might bring, unless to some uh, evidence there, some documents or some smoking gun that my client hasn't told me about. The case looks to me to be relatively straightforward and it's down to the adjudicator to make a decision as to whether my client was entitled to and justified in refusing the alternative of employment. If he was, then he's entitled to redundancy. That's the case. Seven o'clock now and uh, as I say, I'll be heading for Dublin there in an hour or two. park in Smithfield car park 
and I walk across to the WRC. And the reason I do that, I've explained before, is that it allows me to clear my head and uh, go over the case in my mind, go over the arguments, wh what arguments I might expect from the other side and what arguments I'm going to be putting forward. So it's a nice walk, it's probably 50 minutes or thereabouts and uh, I quite enjoy it, especially when the weather is good. Obviously when the weather is bad it's a bit of a, a, bit of a disaster and it can go badly wrong, but uh, generally when the weather is good it's a pleasant walk from Smithfield Car Park to WRC in uh, Dublin 4. Sometimes I have to take, in fact, always I have to take a pit stop there in that hotel. Uh, shout out to O'Callaghan Hotels, I think, I can't remember the name of it. Um, anyway. Three now, and I'm heading back through Smithfield. The Smithfield, obviously, heading back to the car park. Um, it's a long bloody day. Leaving the office this morning at eight o'clock or quarter past eight. The hearing was delayed, and then we had a problem with an interpreter, and then we had a break for bloody lunch, and now we have to go back again for a second day because they have a buttload of witnesses. It went okay, but. I wouldn't be too confident. I gave it a good rattle to be honest about it. And um, I was definitely fairly short with the adjudicator because I was kind of pissed off with the whole thing and the way that she seemed to be siding with the employer all the time. And I really just lost the bloody head, quite frankly, and gave it the holly. But I still put forward good arguments, but I don't think we're going to win. Anyway, we'll see in due course, but I'm a bit um, less confident than I was this morning. Anyway, all we can do is put the case forward on behalf of the client and put our best foot forward and it definitely did that. The client was happy but it's down to the adjudicator now to decide on the facts and decide on the law and I think she's siding with the other side to be honest about it. So unless I can overturn it the next day when I'm cross-examining the other witnesses, I think we're probably not going to succeed with the claim. But anyway, that's it. ...that were designed for neophiliacs like Blender Magazine. Back home now, it's uh, 25 to 5, I picked up my lunch in the office, I didn't get to eat my lunch today because I expected to be home, I expected to be home for lunch but unfortunately the hearing didn't start until, until 12 o'clock, it's supposed to start at half 11, so we went from 12 to 1, break from 1 to 2, uh, back at 2 o'clock, from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock, my I took my client through his evidence, there was an interpreter as well, which delayed things, held things up a little bit, so I was slower with an interpreter, and the adjudicator decided then to adjourn the thing until the next day, and the next day, they're gonna have four or five witnesses, they're gonna to have to give direct evidence, I'm gonna to have to cross-examine them, um, and that's unfortunately the way it is. It, there's a second day now, and that all eats into the time, and, and uh, so on for the particular case, but there's nothing you can do. These things can happen. And often they're very, very badly organized, badly uh, run. I'm not saying this one was, but it should have started on time, not a half an hour late, and I shouldn't have been dumped with the respondent submission at the last minute without, uh, you know, without a backward glance, as it were, from either the adjudicator or from the respondent. It's not fair, quite frankly. I sent in my submission a number of weeks ago and you're supposed to send it in at least 15 days prior to the hearing and it's not good enough for uh, either party to be dumping a submission on the other party at the last minute because they knew all the arguments that I was going to make on behalf of my client and yet I had no idea of the defence that they were going to make on behalf of their client until I got sight of the adjudicator or of the uh, submission just prior to the hearing it's not good enough and there's rules in relation to that but the adjudicator made no mention of it whatsoever 
Anyway, that's it. Rock and roll life as a solicitor. WRC, going to have my lunch now. A bit of sourdough bread and uh, cheese and um, beef. And looking forward to that. And then I'll go for a run and that'll be that. Just want to clarify that having looked back at that video and I'm making it there at the moment or I'm just uh, producing it as it were in the office just to be clear about the case itself we're about halfway through or maybe probably halfway through in other words the case has been adjourned and then the next day the evidence is going to be given by the witnesses for the employer so there will be a number of witnesses for the employer and I'll have an opportunity then to cross-examine those witnesses so even though I was disappointed the first day with the attitude uh, and the demeanour of the adjudicator, I would be still hopeful of either winning the case or getting a very, very, getting it very, very close. And obviously, there's always the uh, possibility of a labour court appeal in other words an appeal to the labour court of the decision of the adjudicator if the case doesn't go uh, to our client's satisfaction and I would still be confident enough about going to the labour court with the facts of this case and with the law on our side and I still think we would have a strong chance of winning probably better than 50-50 so that's a position that we reserve the right to avail of.